Orchestra. We are here today to be your guides on a tour of the symphony orchestra. Did you notice how the orchestra has been divided into four sections? These sections are called instrument families. Each instrument family consists of instruments that are related to one another. Uh, uh, Mrs. Keller, uh, why are you dressed as the famous composer Mozart? Well, I was thinking about writing my own piece of music, but I just don't know where to start. Well, maybe we can help by giving you a tour of the orchestra. Let's see if we can get some help from real live musicians to explain a little bit about their instruments and hear why they belong to that specific family. You will even get a chance to hear them play. Are you ready, Portsmouth musicians? Yay! the instruments of the percussion family located at the very back of the orchestra. Hi, my name is Steve and I play percussion. I've been playing for almost 50 years. Percussion instruments are anything you can strike, shake, or scrape. The percussion section is usually located in the back of the orchestra. I play the main instrument in the orchestra, the timpani. Snare drum is used a lot for many different styles and pieces. There are different types of snare drum. The rudimental field drum. Other drums include the tom toms. These are creating special effects, like the triangles. Of course, there's the cowbell. Instruments that are shaken. Slay bells. Shakers keeping time. impacts like the symbols, the hand symbols.
sometimes use with symbols. Keller? That was wonderful. I mean, how cool was it to have that bass drum and cymbal together? But I'm just not sure I understand how they all belong in the same percussion family. Well, to be part of the percussion family, you have to be able to strike, shake, or scrape your instrument. Do you have it? I got it. They are all so unique and different, but I would like to hear more. Are there any more families I can learn about? Why, yes, there are. In fact, you're sitting in it right now, Mrs. Keller. This is the brass family. Unlike the percussion family, where there's endless number of instruments, the brass family has four instruments. Crystal will show us the first instrument, which is the lowest brass instrument, the tuba. But leave space on that clipboard for the other three. My name is Crystal and I play the tuba. The tuba is a brass instrument that you play by buzzing your lips, which causes the sound to be amplified or made louder because of its series of larger and larger tubes. It is also one of the lowest instruments that you can play and is mainly used in the background. So like oompas and things like that, you're usually gonna hear the tuba do. Uh, but that does not mean you can't play a solo with it. This is the tenor trombone, one of four types of trombones, alto, soprano, tenor, and bass that accompany or were designed to accompany the human voice. It's a very versatile instrument that can be found across almost any western musical genre, but we have a very important seat in the romantic orchestra as one of the strongest uh, voices in the orchestra and one that was often used to signify the voice of God. Hi, my name is Sue and I play the French horn. French horn is a member of the brass family. Although it's very coiled up, if you were to unroll all of this tubing, it would be about 12 to 13 feet long, which stretches all the way across a small room. Uh, the French horn has a little bit darker sound than a trumpet or a trombone and can blend with lots of different instruments. So horn players are very lucky. We get to play in lots of different ensembles. We can play in orchestra, band, brass quintet, lots of chamber ensembles, and even in a wind quintet. We get to sneak into a woodwind quintet even though we are a brass instrument, and that's a lot of fun. One thing horn players are known for is playing horn calls. Our ancestor is a hunting horn. Hunting horns used to play a horn call to signal the beginning of a hunt. So I thought I would play an excerpt for you from Ricard Strauss's first horn concerto, which demonstrates a horn call and shows you a portion of the range that a horn can play from high to low. My name is Adam Gallant, and I play trumpet in the Portsmouth Symphony Orchestra in Portsmouth Brass Quintet. I began playing in fifth grade when I was 10 years old. The trumpet is part of the brass family. It is also a wind instrument, meaning it takes air to play it. The sound is produced when this air passes through vibrating lips. This buzz is greatly amplified by the mouthpiece and then the instrument to produce a more appealing sound. 
The trumpet only has three valves, and there are seven different valve combinations. In order to play more notes, we must vary our airspeed. With only four instruments, that group was mighty loud. Could you please help me figure out what those instruments all had in common? A lot of them have been coiled and twisted so their air can travel through. Their sound comes out of a bell at the end of their instrument. They are played with metal mouthpieces. Mrs. Keller, did the Brass family inspire you and your new piece of music? Well, it was lovely, but I'm just not satisfied that I have all the information that I need. Well, I guess it's time to meet the Woodwind family. This time, let's start with the smallest instrument in the Woodwind family, the piccolo. I'll show you. Hi, I'm Mrs. Marceau, and I play the piccolo. The piccolo is a member of the Woodwind family, and it's very closely related to the flute. You can see it's just a lot smaller than the flute, but you play it the same way by blowing across the tone hole. Because the piccolo is so small, it plays very high notes. Since it plays very high notes, there's usually just one piccolo in the entire orchestra. I started playing the flute when I was just 10 years old, and I started the piccolo two years later when I was 12. Aubrey and I play the flute. I started playing flute when I was eight years old. The flute is a member of the woodwind family. You produce a sound by blowing across the tone hole, much like you would blow across the top of a bottle to produce sound. The flute can play very fast. A lot of times we represent a bird. I'm going to play for you a piece called A Midsummer Night's Dream by Felix Mendelssohn. Hi, my name is John. I'm the principal clarinetist with the Portsmouth Symphony Orchestra, and this is my instrument, the clarinet. I've been playing this instrument since I was in fourth grade, so I was probably about nine years old when I started it. It is made out of wood. Um, your clarinets, if you're a beginner, will be made out of plastic. The most important part is this. This is the reed. The reed is made out of wood, and when I blow on it, it vibrates really fast back and forth, and by covering the holes, I can play different notes, like this. It can play really low, really high. and pretty soft and really loud. This is the clarinet. My name is Sarah. I'm the principal oboist of the Portsmouth Symphony Orchestra. I've been playing musical instruments since I was five years old. First the violin, then the flute. And when I was 15, I settled on the oboe. Here it is right here. The oboe is a member of the double reed family, and the sound is made by gathering a lot of air and blowing into the double reed. The two sides of the bamboo reed vibrate together, making the very distinctive sound of the oboe. Uh, take a listen to Princess Leia's theme from my favorite movie, Star Wars.
name is Melissa and I play bassoon. I started playing clarinet when I was 10 years old and I switched to bassoon when I was 12 years old. Bassoon's an instrument that you usually start playing when you're a little bit older because it's so big and your fingers have to stretch pretty far to reach all of the holes and all of the keys on the instrument. The bassoon is a double reed, which means that I blow through a reed that is two pieces of cane that are wrapped together by a thread and they vibrate when I blow through it and it sounds like this. The reed goes on this piece that's called the bocal or the crook, and the air goes down the tube of the bassoon all the way to the bottom, wraps around at the bottom, and then comes out the top. And when I close all of the holes on the bassoon, I play my lowest note, a low B flat, that sounds like this. The bassoon is the lowest member of the woodwind family in the orchestra, and it often accompanies other instruments, but there are some beautiful solos and melodies that were written for the bassoon, and I'd like to play one for you now. So let me get this straight. In the percussion family, you have to strike, shake, or scrape to play. And in the brass family, all of those instruments have valves that you press down. They're really bendy and twisty and their sound comes out of a bell but can somebody please explain what do all of the woodwind instruments have in common? That family has lots of keys. They are long and straight. You use wind to make the sound. <sighs> all of these families are so nice, but I'm just not sure that I've found what I'm looking for. Well, you are in luck. We have one more family to meet, and it is the largest section in the whole orchestra. May we present the String Family. Oh, the String Family? Tell me more! Hi, my name is Zoya Bologovsky and I'm the Concertmaster of Portsmouth Symphony for the last 10 years. My job there is to tune the orchestra when we start at the beginning of rehearsals and concerts and also to set the bowings for the string section. So the violin is played with a bow. You can play legato. <laughs> string. You can play staccato. It's on the string but short. You can play spiccato which is off the string so that you're bouncing. You can also play pizzicato or you can play chords because we have four strings that you can all use at the same time. You will have a low range, but we're mostly asked to play in the high range. Hi, my name is Autumn and I play the viola. The viola is a member of the string family related to the violin, but it is a little bit bigger than a violin is, and it has some lower notes, some lower strings than the violin has. In the orchestra, it fills in the middle voice, which means it plays the notes between the high violins and the low cellos and basses. Here we go. Johnny and I play the cello. I've been playing the cello since I was five years old and one of the coolest thing about the cello is that it's the closest thing to human voice. It can play beautiful melodies like this. sounds just like this.
Yes, I guess it has been a while. My name is John Stewart, and I play the double bass in the Portsmouth Symphony Orchestra. It's the largest and lowest member of the string family, and literally the bottom line of the scores we play. We use the bow, we can play long tones. Or we can also play fast passages. Aside from the bow, we also use our fingers, and it's called pizzicato. And sometimes we even slap it. So this is the double bass. You can bow it, you can pluck it, and you can spin it. Hi, my name is Piper. I play the harp. I decided to play the harp when I was eight years old. I'm at home today and this is my harp. My harp's name is Grace. Grace is six feet tall. She's taller than me and she has 47 strings. I love playing the harp because of all of the wonderful sounds the harp can make. Like arpeggios that sound like this. Or glissandos that sound like this. can make special effects that sound like this. Or even sometimes we can make funny sounds. I call this the cat's meow. Let me play a short song for you on the harp. missing. Okay, I think I'm ready to get started oh, composing. Oh, wait, Mrs. Keller, I'm so sorry. Uh, we forgot one more person, and they are super important to the entire orchestra. They are kind of like the glue that holds everything together. They stand right about here, and they are... Who could that be? The, the conductor! conductor! Let's hear from the Portsmouth Symphony's very own conductor, John. Why don't you all check to see if you remember the instrument families and all of the instruments? Hi, my name is John, and I am the conductor of the Portsmouth Symphony Orchestra. In a symphony orchestra, you have four different sections. You have the strings, the winds, the brass, and the percussion. In the strings, you have violins, violas, cellos, and basses. In the winds, you have flutes, oboes, clarinets, and bassoons. In the brass section, you have trumpets, French horns, trombones, and the tuba. And in the percussion section, you have a vast array of instruments from timpani to bass drum to cymbals to triangle, xylophone, and the list goes on. And my job as the conductor is to help everyone play together. And I use this, my baton, to help everyone play together and in time. And also to play loudly or softly or short or long. So we can all play together as a team. Portsmouth Symphony. I feel ready and inspired to compose and create my own music, but do you think I should start with the brass family and the strings, or maybe the percussion and the woodwind family? Whatever you want, you're the composer. The beauty of having an orchestra is that all the families come together to create one great masterpiece. 
Thanks for visiting the orchestra with us today. See you, See you soon, Portsmouth musicians.